The first step to re-indexing your torsion bars is to find out which spline you actually need to remove. So in order to do that, you're going to want to slide the bar in and line up the key in the front with the torsion arm. So when you line up that spline, then we're going to see where the spline needs to be in the back that needs to be removed by comparing it to the keyway here. In order to figure all that out, we're going to have to make some marks. So I like to go in here and use some old nail polish that my wife doesn't like anymore and mark the torsion bar right where the keyway is on the front end. Again, the front end is going to be smaller. Now this way, when I drive the torsion bar through the, the tube and into the arm, I can see where the keyway is at the very end. You'll want to mark the torsion tube in the back. Keyway here is on the bottom, right down there. This is just so that when we put the torsion bar in, we can easily see where the keyway is at. Okay, after we mark the torsion tube where the keyway is, we're gonna wanna make sure that we have this adjusting nut put in a place where we want our neutral setting to be. In other words, when we put the car on the ground, where exactly do we wanna have this nut position? Usually I like to have Oh, around a quarter or three-eighths of an inch of threads available to adjust up or down. This is where this re-indexing really comes into play. So if you show about that much threads, that's gonna be fine. If we drive if we drive the torsion bar in with this many threads showing, that means that the car is gonna be neutral in this position. When we put it on the ground, it's gonna load the torsion bar, but at a nice lowered stance. And that way we can go up or down from there. So now that that's in place, we're gonna drive the torsion bar through and the torsion tube and then the torsion arm. So the paint mark is on there towards the inboard side. We're gonna slide this in until we see it line up. You can see where the keyway is and we've got our paint mark right on it. So now I should be able to tap this bar just in a little bit to engage those threads. It's never ideal to hammer directly on the end of the torsion bar because you could really mushroom it out or damage it and then you're gonna have a hard time working with it in the future. So I'd like to use two hammers to do this. First, a small one to kind of get it started by gently tapping. Now it's started. If I'm gonna hammer it in anymore, I'm gonna put this hammer against it and hammer that hammer. This is probably one of the better ways to go about doing that. So now we've got the bar started. It's engaged in the front and I can see down here where the keyway is and that's gonna show me exactly which spline or splines I need to remove on the back end. It looks like, and so your paint mark may not line up to exactly with a certain spline. So right now it looks like my paint mark is in a valley. All I gotta do is rotate the arm just a little bit. And you can see like now my paint mark is gonna line up with this spline right here. This is the one I wanna remove. I'm gonna go get my paint and mark it. Just something to identify it when I go with my grinder. Over here on the bench, I can see exactly the spline I need to remove in order to install my torsion bar at the new re-index position. In most cases, you should find that this paint mark is gonna line up with one of the other, uh, the keyway that's already there. You would sort of expect that since we're only moving at one spline, that we would just be moving a spline that's next to one that's already in the car. Unfortunately, not all torsion bars are made to the same right and left orientation that the car is designed in. So most all the time, you're gonna to have to remove a spline somewhere.
Once you've got this blind ground down, sometimes you want to go back with a file just to finish it off a little bit. Ultimately, this doesn't need to be perfect. If you got a little bit of the spline left in there, that's not going to be a big deal. And if you nick a, a spline next to one of the ones that you're working on, that's all right too. The trick is it just won't go in unless you remove something like this. I feel like I've probably taken enough out of there. I'm going to wipe off any debris. Now this is going to be the final install. So if you plan on putting any anti-seize lubricant on the ends of this torsion bar, I would suggest doing it now. It doesn't need to be a lot, just enough to cook the threads a little bit. Okay, this should be all we need to install this torsion bar in our CRX. We have our tube in place, suspension is installed, we're sliding in the torsion bar from the back, we're lining up the paint mark in the front with the keyway in the arm. We're gonna give a couple of taps. We're gonna give a couple of taps to drive it in there a little bit. And you'll see right away that the torsion bar sort of straightens itself completely out. The torsion bar actually keeps this tube and everything in place. And again, this is probably the best way to knock it in. It takes a pretty good hit to get it going. Now we're moving. You want to drive the bar in far enough so that this snap ring or the circlip groove is poking out the front of the torsion arm. There we go. Medieval Pro torsion bars come with new snap rings and circlips. The circlip goes on the front. Just push it over. And now we're going to knock the bar back. It's not taking a very good hit there, but once you get flush, you'll need to bring out your other hammer. You should more or less bottom out right when the snap ring land comes out the other side. Good. Handy snap ring pliers. Now, if you have a Civic and not a CRX and your car has short torsion tubes in it, you can install these CRX torsion bars. But what you're gonna find is that there's about a quarter of an inch or maybe even less of space between this clip and the back of the tube. That's okay. It won't hurt anything and you should still be able to get the cap on the end of, of the end of the tube. Ultimately, once these are in the car and the car is on the ground, they're under torsion, they won't be moving at all. So this is how you install torsion bars in a Civic or CRX or Integra that has a torsion bar front end. I've showed you how to re-index them by moving the suspension up and bolting it in place with your short suspension, setting the height down here at the adjustment nut, and then subsequently uh, driving the torsion bar in after removing a spline from the back end. Hopefully that absolves any questions that people have about this process. There are a couple other important things to note. Number one, the engine is not in this car. The oil pan is very close to this front of this torsion bar right here. So be prepared for a really difficult time reaching that with the two hammers. It's really best, but you're probably going to have a lot less room to play with on this side. Having it on a lift is really, really helpful. Although I have done it on the ground and it's not impossible. If your torsion bars are seized in there, good luck. They'll come out, but it's gonna be some work. We really hope that you enjoyed this video and that the Medieval Pro torsion bars are gonna be a good solution for your torsion bar Honda. You can find some cool torsion bar Honda content on Instagram by searching torsion bar Hondas. Heel Toe Automotive is always in your corner to make sure you get your parts installed correctly, whether or not it's in a ninth generation Accord, an NSX, or an old torsion bar Honda.